good afternoon everyone so welcome to the tutorial section for the course nptel course classics in total synthesis so this is our third tutorial week and uh, last week and before that last week we have already seen the previous week's summary of the whole week's lectures and we have discussed week zero assignment in the first tutorial session and we have discussed some more questions regarding the reactions uh, which we came through in the last week lectures uh, some problems also we discussed in last class as well i hope you saw that recording which is already available in the nptel portal so uh, we will wait for a couple of minutes if no one is joining we will directly start the session Okay, so we can start today's tutorial session. Uh, so today we, uh, I have planned to discuss the week one assignments questions, uh, which due date is already over in last week. Then we will go through the summary of the content of the last week lectures, uh, some total synthesis of some natural products like prostaglandins and triquinanes. Then we will discuss some problems based on that lectures. So moving to our discussion on week one assignment. first question was what is the difference between semi-synthesis and partial synthesis and the options given are semi-synthesis is the synthesis of a portion of a natural product whereas partial synthesis is the synthesis of a given molecule from an advanced precursor related to it then option b semi-synthesis is the synthesis of a given molecule from an advanced precursor related to it whereas partial synthesis is the synthesis of a portion of a natural product Option C is semi-synthesis is the synthesis of a portion of a natural product, whereas partial synthesis is the synthesis of a key intermediate that has been already converted into the target molecule. And option D is the semi-synthesis is the synthesis of a key intermediate that has been already converted into a target molecule, whereas partial synthesis is the synthesis of the given molecule from an advanced precursor related to it. So I think in the second lecture, we have come through the different terms um, in the week one lecture two, we have come through different terms related to total synthesis and organic synthesis. So in that class, we have discussed what is this are have discussed, what is the definition of the semi-synthesis, partial synthesis, formal synthesis and various other terms uh, have been discussed in that class. So this is a very straightforward question. And the answer is semi-synthesis is the synthesis of a given molecule from an advanced precursor related to it, whereas partial synthesis is the synthesis of a portion of a natural product. That is, uh, semi-synthesis means we are start uh, we are synthesizing our natural product, but we are starting from the advanced precursor that is already available in the nature. Closely related advanced intermediate that is already available in the nature. But in the case of partial synthesis, we are synthesizing only a portion of the natural product. That is, we will be synthesizing a particular fragment of that natural product. That is uh, what is meant by partial synthesis. And another term is formal synthesis, where we will not be completing our synthesis up to the natural product. We will complete the synthesis up to a 
up to an intermediate or up to the core structure from which already previously people have reported the total synthesis of the desired natural product. So that is the difference between these three terms, semi-synthesis, partial synthesis, and formal synthesis, which is different from the total synthesis of a natural product. Now, moving to the second question. Name the first organic molecule synthesized in a laboratory. So this also we have seen in the first class, first class or second class, I think. And the first synthesis by Waller in 1828 was urea so urea is the answer for this question that is the first organic molecule synthesized in the laboratory by waller in 1828 and the next question is a related question that is who coined the term synthesis first so although urea was the first organic molecule to be synthesized in the laboratory the term synthesis was not coined by waller uh, who synthesized urea so, other than Waller, who coined the term synthesis first? And here the answer is Kohl. So, Kohl has coined the term synthesis. In 1845, he synthesized acetic acid. And in that time only, he coined this term synthesis. Then uh, we have also gone through the history. During the discussion about the history of the organic synthesis, we have discussed these things. Now, uh, the next question is, which of the following methods cannot be used for the preparation of three-member rings? Simon Smith reaction, sulfur lines, SN2 displacement of a 1,3-diketone or beta-keto ester, cycloaddition of imines with ketenes. So we have seen various methods for the preparation of three-membered rings in the lectures which uh, handled on the total synthesis of three-membered natural products like Illudin. In Illudin lecture series only we have seen different methods for the synthesis of three-membered rings. So there we have already discussed that the standard methods to prepare the three-membered rings involved, Simmons-Smith reaction, then SN2 displacement of a 1,3-diketone or a beta-keto ester, then from sulfur elides, then cyclopropanation using uh, diazo compounds. So here, these first three options can be used for the preparation of three-membered rings. So the correct answer is cycloaddition of imines with ketenes. So cycloaddition of imines with ketenes, definitely it will not result in a three-membered ring. Now, the next question is, the synthesis approach where two or more fragments are synthesized separately and coupled at a later stage to obtain the target molecule is called convergent synthesis, divergent synthesis, formal synthesis or retrosynthesis. So here we know all these terms. I hope you are familiar with all these terms. Like convergent synthesis is the right answer. And in convergent synthesis, as it is mentioned here, we will be synthesizing two or more fragments of the natural product or the target molecule separately. And then at a later stage, they will be coupled together to get the target molecule. So divergent synthesis means uh, like it will be like a linear fashion. We will be going for the synthesis of our natural product. Then formal synthesis, we already talked about that. That is, we will be synthesizing up to, a, up to a particular intermediate or up to the core structure of the target molecule from which the synthesis has been already reported previously. And retrosynthesis means we will be planning the total synthesis of a particular natural product by um, disconnection approach and functional group manipulations. We will be planning the retrosynthesis of a natural product. So that is the difference between all these four terms mentioned here. Now the sixth question is identify the major product follow, for product in the following transformation. So this beta keto ester is treated with KOH in the present KOH and TBAH that is tertiary butyl ammonium hydroxide and it is treated with this 1,2-dibromoethane. So, what will be the major product in this case? So, 
so you can think about it in a couple of minutes i will give you for thinking about the answer as we know here is a ketone and here is an ester so by treating with a base obviously the first step will be the abstraction of the proton acidic proton will be abstracted so here which will be the more acidic proton So here in this case, this position is the most acidic because it is adjacent to this keto group as well as to this carbonyl group of this ester. So from this position, this base will abstract one proton and that uh, carbanion, that negative charge created here can attack at this position of this 1,2-dibromoethane and one bromine will be eliminated. Then as we know, here are two acidic hydrogens are there. So next, the base can abstract the other proton as well and the negative charge generated there can attack at this position of the 1,2-dibromoethane and this bromine will also be eliminated in that case. So which one will be the answer there? Yes, option C is the answer. So as we said, because of this two hydrogens present here, this compound will be converted at, as a cyclopropane ring and uh, like we saw already, so we told that the SN2 displacement of a 1,3-diketone or a beta-ketoester will generate a 3-membered ring. So this is one method for the generation of a 3-membered ring, this type of beta-ketoester. And obviously, since this ester we are treating with this KOH, ester hydrolysis will take place and this ester will be converted into this corresponding carboxylic acid. So it will not stay as such and we will not get option A because here we are using KOH which can easily hydrolyze this ester. So here what they have discussed is the SN2 displacement of this 1,3-diketone uh, or a beta-ketoester for the generation of a 3-membered ring. So this is one method which is used frequently for generating a 3-membered ring. Now moving to the next question that is seventh question identify the correct intermediate a in the following reaction so this compound we are treating with rhodium tetraacetate dirhodium tetraacetate complex so we will get a product a so we have to predict the structure of this product a and that product a upon uh, treating with this corresponding compound we will be getting this compound so the structure of this compound and the reagent used is given here so we have to just predict the structure of a and these are the four options given here. We have seen many examples which sir has discussed in the various lectures involving a particular intermediate where we are using this rhodium type of complex. So here what is happening is that this dirhodium complex can, uh, ex, uh, can lead to the extrusion of this nitrogen molecule which is a stable product that will get eliminated easily resulting in the formation of a carbene here. That carbene can coordinate with this rhodium resulting in this type of a carbenoid. So here the correct answer is option A. So this type of a carbenoid will be formed. So here the intermediate involved is this carbene species generated at this position or we can say it is a carbonoid because that carbene will be coordinated with this rhodium and uh, that carbene can attack this oxygen as well. So it will result in this, this kind of a particular species. And then what will be the next step? So this particular species can undergo like cycloaddition with this to give this product so that is what is happening in this reaction first this nitrogen elimination will result in this particular carbonoid which this carbene will go uh, go and attack at this oxygen as well to get this kind of intermediate which on treatment with this particular compound can undergo cycloaddition to get this product 
So this will be the correct answer. Option A. Now the next question is a major product A formed in the following reactions. So this also, this reaction we also discussed detailedly uh, like in last class also, uh, for in the first tutorial also we have discussed this in this condition, dihydryl zinc and this type of uh, dihalo compounds. What will be happening and which will be the major product in this reaction? So here, as we know, this is another reaction which is proceeding through a carbene intermediate and uh, this is a named reaction which is Simon-Smith reaction. So here, a zinc carbonoid will be generated uh, which this diethyl zinc can react with this dihalo compound and it can result in the formation of a zinc carbonoid which can react with this alkene present here and it will form a cyclopropane ring. So, one extra carbon will be coming from this CH2I2 mm -hmm. compound. So, this is another method which we have discussed for the generation of a three-membered ring from an alkene. So, here two such options are there, option C and option D, where this particular double bond is converted into this al uh, cyclopropane ring. So, it can be either beta or it, it can be either beta or it can be either alpha that is it can either have the same stereochemistry as that of this OH group and this amine and it can have the opposite stereochemistry of this uh, as of that of this two groups so here the correct answer is option b that is this forming cyclopropane ring will be having the same stereochemistry as that of this both amine and OH. This also we have already discussed it is due to the directing effect of this hydroxyl group because this oxygen can coordinate with the sink and it can direct the incoming the CH2 group to a position that is cis to this hydroxyl group. So the cyclopropane ring will be formed in the same side of that or the same phase of this hydroxyl group. So this will be the correct answer. This is the Simon Smith reaction. Then the next question is identify the major product A formed in the following reaction sequence. So which reaction is this? As we can see, what is this? This is a nitron. So we have discussed about, I think in the last uh, week series, lecture, lecture series also, we have seen variety of reactions involving nitrons. That is particular type of reactions involving nitrons and alkene. So here, as we can see, this double bond can stabilize this nitrogen. So here, this positive charge will be coming. That will result in the formation of a 1,3 dipole. So 1, 2, 3. Here, when it will come positive charge, it will be a 1,3 dipole. So that 1,3 dipole can undergo cycloaddition with this alkene. And which will be the, then after that, lithium aluminum hydride reduction which will be the product. So, 1,3 no. dipolar cycloaddition followed by reduction. What we will get? So, here option B is the correct answer. As we know, this here it will be positive charge. So, it will be attacking the electron rich center of this alkene, which is this particular space particular position and this O minus will be attacking at this position so OH and ME will be coming at the uh, coming adjacent to each other this O and this ME will be attached to the same carbon and LH what it will be doing it will be cleaving this NO bond so it will be NH and OH after treating with LH so this is that that is 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition followed by the reduction of this nitron that is NO bond will be cleaved by this LAH resulting in this product that is option B is the right answer here.
then moving to the last question of the week one assignment so what is the correct structure of the major product formed in the following reaction sequence so this is a similar reaction which we have already seen in uh, the last uh, second uh, second last question we discussed So here also, since this nitrogen diazo type of compound is here, this diazo compound some treatment with this rhodium will generate this carbonoid species where this oxygen can attack with this carbene carbon and generate an intermediate where this oxygen will be attached to this carbon and it will be having a positive charge. And here at this position, this rhodium will be called uh, rhodium will be coordinated. Then Similarly, as we have seen already, uh, already in the uh, in that question here, there is a triple bond which can undergo cycloaddition with that particular species, and therefore we know triple bond on cycloaddition. One bond will be involved in the cycloaddition, and one bond will be remaining as such. So here, option B will be the right answer. That is. Similar to this type of intermediate, we will be getting an intermediate where the carbon and oxygen will be attached and that upon cycloaddition will give the desired product. So these are the questions of week one assignment. I hope there is no further clarification needed because all these questions are straightforward which we already see in the lectures taken by Kritika sir. So all these were straightforward questions and the application of the reactions which we discussed in the lectures. So now I think we can move to the discussion on week three lectures. Uh, so the first lecture, that is lecture 11, we were, uh, sir was continuing on his discussion with the total synthesis of prostaglandins. And in this lecture, uh, prostaglandin PGF2 alpha synthesis by uh, stock and PGE2, racemic synthesis as well as enantio selective synthesis of minus PGE2 by Johnson's group was discussed in this lectures. So uh, this is the structure of PGF2 alpha. So in the stock starter synthesis of this PGF2 alpha, the key chemical transformations were radical cyclization followed by the trapping of that radical and then this broke, broke rearrangement. So broke rearrangement is the rearrangement of silicon groups from carbon to oxygen. So these were the two reactions that are uh, mainly used in this total synthesis of stocks. I am not going into details of this total synthesis because we already saw that in the lecture. So, and this rearrangement, the driving force for this rearrangement uh, of this silicon group from carbon to oxygen is none other than bond strength. That is silicon oxygen bond will be more stronger about 110 kilocalorie per mole compared with the silicon carbon bond that is 76 kilocalorie per mole. So I have added one image for this particular group rearrangement. So here we can see here silicon is coordinated with silicon is bonded to this carbon. So on treatment with this base, the base can abstract this proton from this alcohol resulting in this O minus ion. So next is this silicon group will be migrating from this carbon to this O minus. So this type of an intermediate will be forming. Then next we will be getting this compound because this bond will be breaking and this oxygen silicon bond will be forming as mentioned in this type of intermediate and then this carbanion formed here can abstract the proton resulting in this product so here nothing uh, nothing else than just the shift of this silyl group from this carbon to this oxygen so that is known as broke rearrangement So uh, that was the lecture, first uh, first part of the lecture, which where we saw the discussion on the total synthesis of this PG, 
uh, F2 alpha by stocks where a radical cyclization, uh, specifically 5 exo radical cyclization, and that radical we saw which was trapped by another acceptor. Because this radical once generated, if another acceptor is present in the system, like a double bond or a triple bond, it can trap that radical. Then another rearrangement which he used was Brooke rearrangement, which is an intramolecular thermal rearrangement. That is the migration of silicon from carbon to oxygen. And here in this, for this total synthesis, the cyclopentadiene was the starting material he used. And... Uh, this total synthesis he could achieve from um, uh, cyclopentadiene, uh, cyclopentenol in seven steps. So that was the first part of the total synthesis of prostaglandin by Stokes. Then we saw the total synthesis of this PGE2 uh, by Johnson's group. So in Johnson's total synthesis, he took four longest linear step and the overall yield was 32 percentage and 40 percentage overall yield for the non selective and the racemic total synthesis. And in that case also the starting material was cyclopendadiene. And another important thing was that we saw a triply convergent approach in that synthesis and a 1-4 addition to cyclopendinone also. So another uh, type of oxidation which we came across while discussing this Johnson's total synthesis was this more fat oxidation. Then uh, we already saw that this Hutlicky and co-workers have uh, discussed this total synthesis from toluene as the starting material to get the desired chiral starting material. To get the desired chiral starting material. So that was the discussion about this Johnson's total synthesis where the key reactions was this one for addition to cyclopentenone and this a triply convergent approach. That is cyclopentenone one for addition then quenching it with the electrophile. Uh, that also we have seen. Then this Moffat oxidation is similar to uh, Swan oxidation, but not exactly Swan oxidation. So here what is happening in Moffat oxidation? That is we will be using uh, DCC, our alcohol and this DMSO. And the byproducts will be this DCC byproduct will be the corresponding urea derivative. Then DMSO byproduct will be this DMS as in Swan oxidation. Then we will get our alcohol converted into corresponding ketone or aldehyde. This is more fat oxidation. So DCC and DMSO will be used. So we will see the mechanism of more fat oxidation. So first for the more fat oxidation, this DCC uh, upon protonation will give this species that is this nitrogen can abstract this proton and form this species. So this positive charge on this nitrogen can be neutralized with this bond when this DMSO, O minus in this DMSO will attack at this carbon center. So this carbon center will be electrophilic in nature because of this positive charge here. So this O minus, which is the nucleophilic center of DMSO can attack this particular carbon and this will get neutralized generating this intermediate. This oxygen sulfur bond will be formed with a positive charge on this sulfur. Next, our attack, our oxygen, which is we know highly nucleophilic, it will be attacking the sulfur center and we will get this type of intermediate. Then this nitrogen can abstract a proton from one of the CH3. From one of the CH3, one proton will be abstracted from this nitrogen and uh, this O, uh, this bond between S and O will be shifted to here and this dicyclohexyl urea will be the byproduct and we get this intermediate because this portion have completely eliminated now and we will be getting this alone. This our alcohol part and this sulfur part. Then we can see here one CH2 minus is there which was formed by the abstraction of this proton by nitrogen. So that will be abstracting the proton from our uh, like our starting material, this hydrogen will be abstracted by this particular carbon and this will be the another byproduct that is DMS which is a stable living group. It will eliminate and we will get our desired ketone. I hope this mechanism is clear. Nothing but it is just an... Sorry for that.
So that is the more fat oxidation that is DMSO, DCC plus alcohol giving our oxidized product and this is the mechanism where DCC and DMSO will react to form an intermediate which will react with our alcohol and upon the elimination of this DC that corresponding urea byproduct as well as DMS we will be getting our ketone as the byproduct. So in the next lecture we see in the total synthesis of biotin and lactocysteine. So by Corre, uh, Corre is total synthesis of biotin and uh, lactocysteine total synthesis by uh, Balbin. So we for the technical pictures. So biotin uh, is, uh, so here in this lecture what we have seen in summary is the application of intramolecular So in the lecture 12, we have seen the application of intramolecular nitrine olefin cycloaddition reaction for the total synthesis of biotin. And we have seen the application of stereoselective aldol reaction in the total synthesis of plus lactocysteine by Balbin and aldo coupling reactions in the total synthesis by Corey. So biotin is an essential vitamin which is used for the gluconeogenesis and fatty acid biosynthesis in our body. And it is having three contiguous stereocenters. So it is having this three contiguous stereocenters and a tetrahydrothiophene ring, which is this ring, and a five carbon atom chain with a carboxylic acid. So this is the structure of biotin. And the first order synthesis of biotin uh, was done by uh, Roche Group in 1982, which is uh, in Anshu selective. Uh, in anxious specific total synthesis where the starting material was l 16 which is an amino acid and the key reaction involved was intramolecular 3 plus 2 cycloaddition between nitron and alkyl so there we have seen a detailed discussion about the intramolecular 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction where in a nitron which will be the electron deficient and which will be the electron rich and, and according to that which product will be formed regioselectively and stereoselectively which uh, bond will be formed like what kind of product will be formed whether endo product or exo product since in the case of uh, 3 plus 2 cycloaddition that is 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition this secondary orbital interaction is very small so endo exo that ratio will be controlled by the substrate or the catalyst so in the case in, we know in Diels-Alder reaction mostly endo is favored because of the secondary orbital interaction so if we are considering steric, obviously exo will be the major product. So mostly in this 3 plus 2 cycloaddition, since the secondary orbital reactions, are, uh, secondary orbital interactions are very small, exo will be the major product there. So in this synthesis of this biotin, uh, this uh, Roche group has used 11 linear steps with 8.19 percentage of overall yield. So next we saw the total synthesis of lactocystin. This is the structure of this lactocystin which is isolated from streptomyces species in 1991. So we can, as we can see this amide bond, not amide, this amino acid groups. Two amino acids are already present in this molecule that is serine and cysteine is also already present that is N-acetyl. N-acetyl cysteine is present and the serine type of amino acid is also present. So its first total synthesis was reported by E.J. Corey in 1992. Where the key steps are aldol coupling and protection deprotection sequence and the group selectivity also we saw. Then there, uh, they are getting 6.04 percentage of overall yield where they are utilizing 14 steps from the non cis oxysolidin derivative. So, yes, that are the key reactions, aldo coupling, aldol coupling, protection and group selectivity. And also we have seen that 14 steps they are using for from 6 oxysolidin derivative, which they are obtaining from a benzyl serine methyl ester with an overall yield of 6.4 percentage, 6.04 percentage. Then in the Baldwin's total synthesis for the same compound that is lactocystin. 
which was reported in 1994 he is also using this chiral static material that is r glutamate and then the key reaction is the stereoselective aldol reaction of a siloxypyrrole with aldehyde thereby he is generating he is able to generating a quaternary center and a tertiary a secondary alcohol which is in the appropriate stereochemical form required in the natural product so the stereoselective aldol reaction between a siloxypyrrole group and an aldehyde is giving the required a uh, secondary alcohol in the with the correct stereochemistry and a quaternary center also with the correct stereochemistry so in the balvin stotter synthesis of lactacystin he is getting 4.27 percentage of overall yield with 20 steps in total So that was all about the lecture 12 that is the total synthesis of biotin and lactacystin biotin by Roche group and lactacystin by EJ Corey and Balvin's group. Then in that uh, in I think in this total synthesis of biotin we have come across this phenic oxidation and swan oxidation swan oxidation mechanism we have already discussed previously. Then in lactacystin total synthesis, we are coming across another oxidation which is chromium based, that is Jones oxidation. So I have attached here the mechanism for the pinic oxidation. I think this is obviously familiar to all of you. That is, this aldehyde is converted into corresponding carboxylic acid by using this NaClO2 and sodium hypophosphate and this mixture of the solvents. So here it is the mechanism. So with this treatment of this NaClO2 and NH2PO4, a chlorous acid will be generated and this oxygen will be abstracting this proton from this chlorous acid and therefore this O- will be forming and that O- will be attacking this carbon center, nucleophilic carbon center. Electro, sorry, it is the electrophilic center. So, it will be attacking this electrophilic carbon center. So, this complex will be formed. This intermediate will be formed. Which can undergo this elimination of this particular HOCl, hypochlorous acid. And resulting in the formation of this carboxylic acid. So, that is basically the mechanism of this reaction. These are some of the side reactions. Which is a... Uh, 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 our interest is the conversion, how this particular aldehyde is converted into this acid. So, this chlorous acid is playing the role here. So, from this chlorous acid, this proton will be abstracted by this oxygen and at this electrophilic center, this O- will be attacking. Then followed by the elimination of this hypochlorous acid, we will be getting this carboxylic acid. So, that is the mechanism of penic oxidation. Then in lecture 13, we started our discussions regarding triquinanes. So lecture 13, 14, 15, all the three lectures and I think the upcoming week four lectures are also about the total synthesis of various triquinanes. So basically in this lecture 13, we have seen the two total synthesis of isocomine, which is an angular triquinane by Perron group and Fidger group. So where they are using an intramolecular 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. And an acid catalyzed type of rearrangement uh, for the total synthesis. Then we have seen a very brief description about various type of triquinanes. That is a five-membered ring is normally called as a quinate. So if two five-membered rings are present, we will be calling it as a diquinate. And if three five-membered rings are present, it will be triquinanes. And then uh, similar to that tetraquinane and another derivative is triquinacine where this Two five-membered rings will be fused with another five-membered ring in this fashion. So, triquinanes can be classified into various types. Depending on how these five-membered rings are arranged in the triquinane, if they are arranged in the linear fashion, they we can call it as this linear triquinane. So, if this triquinane, that is the two three cyclopentane rings are arranged in a linear fashion, we can call it as linear triquinane. And this linear triquinanes can also be classified as cis, anti cis, as well as cis, sin cis, depending on the arrangement of this particular particular hydrogen 
in this linear trichinase. Then uh, angular trichin then next type is angular trichinase that is two five membered rings will be in linear fashion and one five membered ring will be fused with this in a particular angular fashion. So that is angular trichinase. Then another type of trichinase is propylene type of trichinase system that is represented here. Then another type of trichinase is trichinakine. So Quinanes can be dicunane, tricunane, or tetracunane, and tricunanes can be classified into linear, angular, propylene, tricunanine, uh, based on the arrangement of this five membered rings in different fashion. So, this uh, tricunane skeleton is present in various natural products. Some of them include herostine, serapicol, coriolin, capnelane, and isocomene. And isocomines and sylphinane, pentalanine, then sylphiferfolane. These are some of the examples for angular trichonines. And herustin and capnelane are examples for linear trichonines. So here in this lecture, we have seen the total synthesis of this minus isocomine, that is alpha isocomine and beta isocomine, where the difference between these two species is the presence of this position of this double bond. Here, this double bond is internal. But here, as we can see, this double bond is exocyclic. So, here there are, as we can see, uh, this two angular methyl groups are there at this position and this position. And three contiguous carbon centers, three contiguous carbon stereo centers are also there due to the presence of this angular methyl groups. So first we saw the total synthesis by Pirenz group which was done in completed in 1979 where he could get 42 percentage overall yield and there the major uh, reaction was or the key reaction was 2 plus 2 photocyclic addition reaction and then another key reaction was the ring expansion. Ring expansion by acid, cat uh, acid catalysis that is we have seen here wagner mirwin rearrangement. So here uh, Perang's, ha Perang's group have used 2 plus 2 photocyclic addition as well as this wagner mervin rearrangement which is used for the ring expansion catalyzed by acid. And uh, thereby he is obtaining this 5 membered ring from a starting 4 membered ring. Then here he is using this 2 methyl 1 3 cyclohexadione as the starting material. So that was the basic concept of the total synthesis by Perang's group for this isocomene. Then uh, next we have seen this figure total synthesis where this were the key reactions utilized were both same wagner mervin type rearrangement and a 2 plus 2 photocyclo addition and the starting material used was acetone and this synthesis was reported in 1988 which took 9 longest linear steps and 6.6% um, percentage of overall yield. So here parents group has taken 6 longest linear steps with 42% percentage of overall yield. So that was about the lecture 13 where we have seen a discussion about the triquinines and the total synthesis of alpha isocomene and beta isocomene by Perang's group and Fidger's group. Then in the, uh, ah, okay, so we already saw that in both the synthesis, the key reactions are 2 plus 2 photocyclic addition and this acid catalyzed rearrangement that is wagner mervin rearrangement so this is the common mechanism for the wagner mervin rearrangement that is basically uh, this living group this one group will be lived and their corresponding carbocation will be generated and the migration of another group to this carbocation generating another stable carbocation so as we can see when this y group is migrating towards this position this tertiary carbocation is generated which is obviously more stable than this particular secondary carbocation. So, there 1 to hydrogen shift take place if Y is this hydrogen, 1 to alkyl shift takes place if this Y is R group and 1 to aryl shift will take place if Y is aromatic group. And then this carbocation can either be attacked by a nucleophile which will result in this product or it can undergo elimination of this hydrogen and hydride, el hydride elimination and then it can result this this proton elimination and it can result in the alkene as well so one example is given here so when we are treating this compound with 
H3O plus obviously this alcohol will get protonated it will form H2O plus and water molecule will be eliminated generating this carbocation here so from here this is secondary carbocation this one to alkyl shift is taking place resulting in the formation of this tertiary carbocation at the center and uh, this has this can be redrawn like this then from here if we are not using any nucleophile directly elimination of one proton will take place resulting in the formation of this combo so that is the basic concept of wagner mervin rearrangement so it is a carbocation mediated reaction and the driving force will be the formation of the more stabilized carbocation so ring expansion examples can be discussed like this so here uh, this alkene when treatment with this hcl it will be abstracting a proton and here this the sender will be abstracting a proton and here this carbocation will be generated at this position and then um, ring expansion is taking place that this particular alkyl group is shifting to this this bond will be breaking and here this carbon will be attached to this carbon and here at this center uh, one carbocation will be generated so it will be one two three four five a five member ring is forming with the breaking of this bond and a carbocation is generated at this particular position which can be quenched by the cl minus which is a nucleophile resulting in this product so this is a type of ring expansion reaction that is a wagner mervin type rearrangement through this carbocation Then another example of this type of ring expansion reaction is this is uh, similar but here this water or hydroxyl group is present so it can get protonated and eliminated as water molecule resulting in this carbocation here and there alkyl shift will be taking place resulting in the formation of a five membered ring with a carbocation in the ring when it is quenched by the nucleophile it will result in this compound when then again it can rearrange that is this alkyl group can be shifted to here because here it is secondary carbocation when this alkyl group the ch3 is shifted to here this carbon will get positive charge and then it will be tertiary carbocation then from there elimination can take place to get this compound so this rearrangement will continue until we get the most stable carbocation so this is the uh, wagner mervin rearrangement where he, we have seen Uh, the basic concept of wagner mervin rearrangement and how it can be utilized this is like an expansion of the or a modification of the wagner mervin rearrangement where it can be used for the expansion of ring and in the total synthesis of isocomene also they are using this type of ring expansion for the construction of five membered rings from this four membered rings in the next lecture lecture 14 was also about this alpha and beta isocomene and another natural product which is sulfiferfol 6 in 5 on by ravel's group uh, and so here we have seen the application of paterno bucci reaction and ravel and coworkers in 1994 have synthesized this alpha and beta isocomenes where the key reactions are a paterno bucci reaction conversion of ester to ketone and ring opening of oxytane where he is taking 14 linear steps to get 20 percentage of overall yield so the first key reaction was a paterno bucci reaction which we know is a 2 plus 2 photocyclic addition reaction between an alkene and carbonyl group resulting in the formation of an oxytane ring 2 plus 2 photocyclic addition reaction between this alkene and carbonyl group to form an oxytane ring that is paterno bucci reaction Then the next step is the conversion. Then the next key reaction was the conversion of ester to ketone, where we are generating a sulfur lithium uh, complex that is a beta keto sulfoxide, and this beta keto sulfoxides are valuable intermediates which permits simple, economic, and efficient synthesis of ketones. So this beta keto sulfoxides are utilized for the conversion of ester to corresponding ketones. so c double bond o o m e will be converted into c double bond o m e that is actually what is happening in this conversion of ester to ketone 
Then the next step we saw the ring opening of this oxytane by lithium or liquid ammonia, which is an electron addition or LIDBB like species we are using for such type of the ring opening of oxytane ring, which we are getting as a result of this paternal Puji reaction. So, uh, in this total synthesis, Rabel has taken 14 linear steps with 20 percentage of overall yield. Then the next total synthesis was for this sulfifer fold 1651, which was reported by this Rabel's group in 1980. Here also, and this, um, this is another angular trichunate. And this key, key reactions are same as we discussed before, that is Patinobuji reaction conversion of ester to ketone and ring opening of the doxity. Here starting material is 2,4-dimethyl cyclopentadiene. So here uh, what is one major difference is that here they took 14 linear steps to complete the total synthesis of this isocomene. So they modified the strategy and this here is not the total synthesis here. This here actually for isolation of this compound 1980. And here they could achieve this total synthesis in five steps. That was one major achievement for this group. Same group only and same key reactions, but they modified their strategy and they could get this another angular trichurine in five steps, which is uh, also in 35% of overall yield. So that is about the total synthesis of uh, the trichurines, isocomene and sulfifer four. And now in the last lecture uh, on the trichonines of last week, week three lectures, we have seen the tri uh, synthesis of this heristine and capnelin. So heristine and capnelin, as we can see, they are linearly fused trichonines. And here they are utilizing the application of tandem radical cyclization uh, and Claisen rearrangement for the total synthesis of heristine and capnelin by Curens group. So radicals, as we know, can be generated from alkyl halides using AIBN, that is aso, iso, aso bis, isobutyl nitrile, and tributyl tinhydrate. And the, the driving force is the radical is generated because this nitrogen in this AIBN is a good leaving group. So easy extrusion of that nitrogen molecule will generate a radical. And this tertiary butyl tinhydrate can be used for radical cyclization for the removal of nitro groups. Then we have seen a brief discussion about the Balvin's rule, how the cyclization will be taking place and the terminology used for that, whether the product will be exo, whether the product will be endo and like N exo dig or trig or tet if it is attacking at the dig center it will be sp sp center then we will be called it as dig if it is attacking in the sp2 center we will be calling it as trig if it is attacking in the sp3 center we will be calling it as tet then depending on whether the final radical forming is outside the ring the compound we will call the okay exocyclization has take place here if the final radical is inside the ring we will tell okay endocyclization have taken place there so that is the terminology for this balvin rule and we have seen a set of rules whether about, uh, whether it is stating which which will be favored which will be disfavored like 5 exodic 5 endodic between that which will be favored like that also we saw the discussion on the um like selectivity for this radical cyclization if i am not wrong mm. yes uh, like all exotric reactions are favored Three endotric, four endotric, and five endotric reactions are disfavored. Six endotric reactions onwards are favored. That is the case of uh, trig reactions. Then coming to dig, all endotic reactions are favored. Three exodic and four exodic are disfavored. Five exodic onwards reactions are favored. So that is the sum of the rules utilized in the, uh, some of the rules stated by this Balvin's theory for this radical cyclization. So, so, the first authentic polyquinine natural product is this heuristic acid, which was isolated in 1966 and it is a type of linear trichurine. So, linear trichurines, as we said, four different types are there depending on the position of this methyl group, uh, heuristine, capnelane, ceratopicane and pleurotelane. Here we can see, although this position of this double bond is same, 
here one methyl group is here and one hydrogen is here but in this case both are hydrogens here here as we can see both the hydrogens are here and here one hydrogen and one methyl group also this position of this dimethyl group is also different in this both heristine and capnelline so there is significant difference in the total significant difference in the structure of these two linear trichinates heristine and capnelline then uh, we have seen the curine synthesis of endoheristine where the key reactions are radical cyclization uh, Claisen rearrangement and he is starting with 2 methyl cyclopentenone to get the core lactone uh, that is reported in 1985 in 14 steps he could get 7.9 percentage of overall yield then for the total synthesis of capnelling by curine similar strategy he is following which was reported in same year 1985 starting from cyclopentenone and in 14 steps he could get 8 percentage of overall yield and this is the place and rearrangement which is one of the key reactions utilized for this herostine and capnelane by the curance group so here i have given the aliphatic 3 3 sigma tropic shift and aromatic 3 3 sigma tropic tropic shift first is overman rearrangement and this is Ireland place and rearrangement. So upon thermal condition, this is like, this can be drawn like this. So this will be coordinated here and this bond will shift to here. This bond will break. It will shift to here and this bond will be shifting to here, resulting in this chair like transformation. So this is one, two, three, one, two, three, three, three bond is forming and one, one bond is breaking. So this is three, three sigma tropic shift in through this chair like transformation state in the case of aliphatic system in the case of aromatic system as we can see this will be one two one two three and one two three and this three three bond will be forming one one bond will be breaking and this will be forming and this can be tautomerized to get the stable aromatic compound that is this rearranged product so this is aromatic three three sigma tropic shift So that is one of the key reactions which we discussed in the total synthesis of heristine and capnelin. So uh, we discussed the week one assignments. I hope it is clear for you. Then we saw the total synthesis of this prostaglandins uh, by Stokes group and Johnson's group. Then uh, Moffat oxidation mechanism. Then total synthesis of biotin and lactocystin by E.J. Corey group, then thinic oxidation mechanism, then triquinates, what are the different types of triquinates and the total synthesis of isocomene and beta isocomene by Perangs and Figures group. Then we saw the general mechanism as well as the mechanism for ring expansion in the case of wagner mervin rearrangement which is utilized in the total synthesis. Then uh, we saw the total synthesis of isocomene and sulfiferol by Ravel's group. And then last we have seen the total synthesis of herostin and capnelli uh, by this uh, Curan's group where radical cyclization and Claisen rearrangement are the key steps and we have seen this Claisen rearrangement mechanism as well. Now we will move on to the discussion on some questions uh, based on the reactions which we have discussed in this week 3 lectures. So this is the first question. Identify X and Y in this reaction. So I will give you some time for thinking, of, uh, thinking about this and you can answer for this question. So first upon thermal condition we will be getting X. X upon uh, photochemical condition, we will be getting Y.
so here what will be happening is first there is this diene and this dienophile which upon thermal condition we know it can undergo 4 plus 2 cycle addition reaction and the major product will be endo so we will be getting this compound so which is this this will be this product c endo will be the major product in that case because of the presence of this group there will be secondary orbital interaction and endo will be the major product then upon photochemical condition it can undergo there is an alkene and this carbonyl group so it can undergo 2 plus 2 cycle addition upon photochemical condition we saw that a four membered ring that is oxytane ring can be formed which is the reaction is known as Paternobuji reaction so here this Paternobuji reaction will be happening to form this oxytane type of ring that is this four membered ring will be forming one two and three four between this this type of four membered ring will be forming and there we are getting this four membered ring from this alkene and this carbonyl group by Paternobuji reaction under photochemical condition 2 plus 2 cycle addition is taking place so this is the answer option c is the correct answer option c is the correct answer so the sequence of reactions involved here are 4 plus 2 cycle addition reaction and this Paternobuji reaction so that is our question. Hello, am I audible? Okay, so that is the question. Now moving on to the next question. Which will be the major product in this reaction? The major product of this following reaction. There are four options given. So it is acid catalyzed. So what will be taking place here? Hello, am I audible? The major product in this following reaction, acid catalyzed. So this is basically a type of rearrangement. So what will be this rearrangement and what is actually happening here? So this is the mechanism here as we can uh, see here uh, the answer is this option 4. So what is happening here is first this H plus will be abstracted by this oxygen. This lone pairs will abstract this proton. So then it will be OH plus. So to stabilize that OH plus this ring expansion this alkyl shift is taking place to here. So that will result in the formation of this 5 membered ring. One, two three four five so a five membered ring will be formed and this will be oh and we will get a carbocation at this position because this bond is breaking so the carbocation will be formed at this position then next step is ring contraction that is this lone pair again will shift to here and this is taking uh, this bond will be shifting to here to stabilize this carbocation and this bond will be stabilized by this forming ketone so this will be forming. 
So this is the major product that is first this acid catalyzed ring expansion followed by this ring called reaction to get this product. I will give some time to make it clear. So I think it is clear now this acid catalyzed this OH plus formation then followed by this bond is migrating here then again that lone pair of oxygen when it will come back this bond will migrate to here to stabilize the carbocation formed here resulting in the formation of two fine mover rings. So the next question is a major product formed in the following reaction. Four options are given when we are seeing this kind of diazo compounds obviously we know what will be the first reaction through which intermediate this reaction will be going. So here, so first step is will be with the treatment of this trifluoroacetic acid, carbene will be generated here at this position because of this elimination of this nitrogen. So this carbene will be formed here and here what is happening is because of the presence of this OME group at this position, this lone pair can shift to here, this bond can migrate to here and this bond can attack at this carbene. So it will be formed like this will be attacked to this carbon center and there a negative charge will be formed then upon acid hydrolysis so here it will be double bond ome plus and upon acid hydrolysis this negative charge will be shifted to here and this here will be o minus then again like this o minus will shift to here this bond will be shifted to here and uh, this elimination of this minus cf3 cooh3 that is this me group will be leaving stabilizing this oxygen forming this compound as the product. So here option 3 will be the answer. So I, hope this, sorry so I hope this mechanism is clear. I will tell once again that is carbene generation here. And then because of the presence of this OME group, this lone pair and this oxygen can be shifted to this position. And this bond will migrate to this position and this will be attacking at this carbon center. Then here this bond will be formed. Like this, this bond will be formed and then again, um uh, like it will be upon acid hydrolysis this negative charge will be formed here that can tautomerize to the xenol form then again when the xenol will come back to ketone state this that double bond will be formed at this position and then 
this methyl group will be eliminated and we will get this as our product. So this will be formed through this carbene type of intermediate. So that was our third question. Now moving to the fourth question. What is the major product formed in the following reaction? And this is a keto group here. Here oxygen is there. So which this is another type of rearrangement reaction and which is this reaction and which will be the major product. Maybe you can think for a couple of minutes. We have few more questions. This is the third question. I think we have seven more questions and we have time also. So this is, we already discussed many problems based on this type of rearrangement. That is nothing else, Flavorsky type of rearrangement. So here as we can see, NaOME is a base. It will be abstracting proton from this center. So here a negative charge will be forming that can attack at this center. It is a kind of ring contraction at this center. And this double bond will be shifted to here. And this bromine will be eliminated. So that will result in this in this particular compound. Then again, NaOME, this OME minus from this NaOME can attack at this position, and this ring will be open here, resulting in the formation of a ring here, five-membered ring, with the COOME and this alkene. So our correct answer will be which one? This will be our correct answer option 2. I think it is clear this NaOME first it will abstract this acidic proton from here then that bond will be shifted to that bond that carbonion can attack at this position and this bond will be shifted to here followed by the elimination of this bromide then another OME minus will be attacking at this center and as a result this bond will be cleaving we will get a five membered ring with one COOME and this alkene in the side chain so this will be our major product option two will be our major product. This is an example of Fabersky type rearrangement. So, next question is, the given reaction is proceeds via a 1,3 hydrogen shift followed by 4 plus 2 cycloaddition, a 1,5 hydrogen shift followed by 4 plus 2 cycloaddition, 3 plus 2 cycloaddition followed by hydride shift, a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition followed by alkyl shift. So, which will be the correct sequence?
So here the correct sequence of reaction is this one. So we know um, first if one tree hydrogen shift is uh, happening, uh, there will be no such like a generation of a particular dye to undergo D cellular reaction with this to get this corresponding product. And there is no dipolarophile we, as we can see in this case for a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition to take place. So anyway, option 3 cannot come and option 1 cannot come. Then for directly a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition to take place, there is no dye in here other than this aromatic ring. So also a dienophile is here. So the only possibility is this 1, 5 hydrogen shift followed by 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. So as we can see, this hydrogen, there are two hydrogens at this position. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If this hydrogen is, um, hydrogen like this bond, this hydrogen is, eliminating from here this bond will shift to here this bond will come here and here at this position this will abstract that particular proton so this hydrogen will come from here to here one bond will be formed here and here so that will result in the formation of a diene and this diene can undergo Diels-Alder reaction with this dienophile and give this corresponding product as we can see here, both the hydrogens are in cis position. So in this product also, both the hydrogens will be in cis position. So what is happening is hydrogen from here, it is getting uh, abstracted at this position, shifting so that hydrogen bond, carbon hydrogen bond will be shifting to here, this bond will shift to here and this bond will abstract that proton here. So from this position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hydrogen is coming here. So it is clearly a 1, 5 hydrogen shift forming this dye, which can undergo Diels-Alder reaction with this dienophile where it is cis dienophile, so cis will be the product. And we will get this as a 4 plus 2 pi cycloaddition product. So that's the first five questions. First we saw this series of reaction first 4 plus 2 then 2 plus 2. First 4 plus 2 under thermal condition and 2 plus 2 that is pattern of buji and the photochemical condition to form the oxytane ring. And in the second case, we have seen that it is a type of wagner mervin rearrangement where a carbocation is formed followed by the alkyl shift leading to the uh, ring uh, expansion and then ring contraction due to the presence of this hydroxyl group. So this will be the major product here in that case. And in the third question, we have seen... The carbene will be generated at this position and due to this the OME group it will push the electrons to here this bond will migrate here and this will attack at the carbene and then a, again this uh, enolization will take place uh, in the presence of this acid to get this type of double bond here and again then this O- minus will come back to ketone this bond will shift to here and at this position this ME group will be eliminated forming this so this will be minus CF3COO CH3 will be forming. It is not H3, it will be CH3. Then the next question which we already discussed previously also favors key rearrangement that is NaOME will be abstracting proton from here. So carbanion will be generated at this position which attack at this place and this double bond will shift to here. Bromine will be eliminated then another OME minus will be attacking at this position and this bond will be um, like broken and that will result in the formation of this five member tree. An example for Fabersky type rearrangement. And the fifth example was this one. So here for cycloaddition to take place, there should be a diene that will be generated by this 1,5 hydrogen shift followed by the Diels-Alder reaction under thermal condition. We will get this product.
then moving to our next question that is a major product formed in the following uh, given reaction is so what will be the major product formed in the following reaction and these are the four options this is first one this is the second one and this is third one and this is fourth one I will give you some time to think about this. So this is what is happening in this reaction. First, this zinc chloride on treatment with this compound, this oxygen can coordinate with our zinc. I think one carbon is extra here. C double bond O. Ah, like this is CO2, CF3, it is correct. So, this uh, zinc chloride can coordinate with this oxygen to form this particular species which um, will eliminate this. This will be stable as CF3COOH and it will be generating a carbanion at this position. At this position, a carbanion will be generated. Then, this carbanion, as we can see, it can undergo 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition with the cyclopentadiene. Because this will be like minus and plus, this bond will be. So here it will be minus and here it will be plus. So it will be act as the dipole, dipolar of file and it will undergo 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition to form this compound. And here this carbocation will be generated, which can be stabilized by the elimination of this TMS group to form this exocyclic double bond. This is not exactly 3 plus 2. It is uh, a type of cycloaddition but not exactly 3 plus 2. Because here we are getting this for a uh, 6-membered ring. So this is the correct answer. You can just go through this mechanism what is happening. Because in uh, 3 plus 2 only dipolarophile and dipole will be there. But here both these bonds are getting involved. So it is like one like this alkene and this position also getting involved. This is like a dipolarophile, dipolar and this is like both the bonds are getting involved. So it is normal. It is not normal type of 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition reaction.
I hope it is clear. So I will explain once more. The zinc chloride can coordinate with this oxygen. That is C double bond or o oxygen that can coordinate with this zinc. And then the stable CF3, COOH will be eliminated. And here a carbanion, carbocation will be generated at this particular position. Which can undergo uh, the cycloaddition type of reaction with the cyclopentene. Cyclopentadiene and it can form the six membered ring with this carbocation here which will be stabilized by the elimination of this TMS group and this bond will be shifted to here to form this exocyclic double bond. So this fourth option will be the major product in that case. So the next question is with respect to the following biogenetic conversion of chorismic acid that is A to 4 hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid that is option C. Uh, the correct statement is so the reaction X is Claisen rearrangement and reaction Y is oxidative decarboxylation. X is Fry's rearrangement, Y is oxidative decarboxylation, X is Fry's rearrangement, Y is dehydration, X is Claisen rearrangement, Y is dehydration. So which is the correct sequence of reaction? And obviously we, ha we have to know the structure of B to get into the compound C. Although that is not a part of the question. So as we can see this allyl system here, O allyl system at this position, there is a possibility for place and rearrangement. Then also one carboxylic acid group is missing in the product. So maybe oxidative decarboxylation is one possibility. So this chorismic acid to 4 hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid. This is a biogenetic conversion. That is, we are not using any particular reagents or anything here. So this is what is happening. First is as expected, it is place in rearrangement. And second is decarboxylation. So option 1 will be the correct answer. That is here, this we can number as 1, 2 and 3. And this will be 1, 2 and 3. So this between these two a bond will be forming. So that will be uh, and this bond will be breaking. So this bond will shift to here. This bond will shift to here. And this bond will be breaking and it will be shifted to here. So it will be like at this position we will get the CH, C double bond or COOH. This will be forming. Okay, I think here is one no, hydroxyl group is already there which is mentioned in the product that is missing here. So then oxidation um, at this position, oxidation of this hydroxyl group at this position can give to double bond O, see double bond O here and then decarboxylation. Decarboxylation means this will be eliminated. So it will be just CH2, C double bond O, COOH in the keto form. And in the enol form, it will be converted into OH and it will be aromatic. So there are some mistakes in the structure. So it will be. Uh, 
aromatic because this ketone uh, when converted into enol it will be uh, aromatic form and there is one OH is missing at this position as well so here will be one OH and here also one OH is missing that is oxidized to that ketone and here it will be not like this this will be here here and here also bond will be there it will be aromatic So correct answer is option 1. X is glaze and rearrangement and Y is oxidative decarboxylation. So I think it is clear now. So what first is place in rearrangement, three three sigma tropic rearrangement. This bond will be breaking. This bond will be migrating to here. This will be migrating to here, and this will be shifting as ketone. So here it will come CH two COOH, then CH two C double bond O and COOH. Then next step is upon oxidation of this hydroxyl group, it will be converted into corresponding ketone, and then decarboxylation to give this corresponding product. Next is following conversion involves. So a reaction is given. A 1,3 dipolar species as a reactive intermediate and a cycloaddition. A carbenium ion as a reactive intermediate and cycloaddition. A 1,3 dipolar species as a reactive intermediate and azavitic reaction. A carbon ion as a reactive intermediate and NASA cope rearrangement. So which will be the rearrangement taking place here and which will be the reactive intermediate. This is the seventh question. The seventh, eighth question. We have two more questions only. I will give a couple of minutes to think about this reactive intermediate as well as the reaction taking place here. So this is what is happening here. 
and the correct answer is one three dipolar cyclo uh, one three dipolar cyclo addition and this uh, one three dipolar species has the reactive intermediate and cyclo addition is the reaction taking place so in the presence of this triethylamine a proton will be abstracted from here generating a carbanion species here which will be stabilized by this bond it will uh, shift to here and it can shift to this nitrogen so it will be like it can shift to here actually so it will be like a one three dipolar species because this bond is so here this is the correct answer here what is happening that is triethylamine can abstract a proton here and it can generate a one three dipolar species like this then with this corresponding alkyl alkyl it can undergo one three dipolar cyclo addition this negative charge will attack this electron deficient sender and this electron uh, rich sender will be attacking this carbon which is electron deficient so it will result in this kind of five membered compound and here what is happening is uh, this treatment of this base will abstract a proton from this position so here it will be negative charge or this bond will shift to here and this bond will shift to here and this chlorine will be eliminated so we will get this compound here there then in the presence of h plus this nitrogen will be quenched with this proton and we will get this product You may go through this mechanism then once again I will discuss it in detail. Here one step is missing that is this compound upon treatment with the base. That is again triethylamine. So I hope it is clear by now. So first triethylamine will be abstracting a proton from this position which is high acidic proton and then uh, a 1,3 dipolar will be generated because this is also polarizable so positive charge will be here and negative charge will be here. So uh, what will be happening like 1,3 dipole will be forming and that will attack on this dipolar of phi like this fashion and it will generate this phi membered ring and here again triethylamine can abstract proton from this position so this bond will be shifted to here and this bond will shift to here and this chlorine will be eliminated uh, generating a double bond here and double bond here and this n minus will be quenched by this proton source so we will get this compound and the reactive intermediate is one three dipolar species and the key reaction is cycloaddition So this is the second last question. Predict the structure of A in the following reaction. So first step is photochemical reaction which can be 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. The next step is ozonolysis and this then we are treating it with base. So which will be the starting material so that we will get this corresponding lactone product.
you can think about the possibilities of uh, photochemical reaction then ozonolysis and then what will be the next step based on these all starting materials So here in this question, the correct answer is option one. So I will explain that this can be rearranged like this for that. So that this alkene, uh, alkene and alkyne will come together so that we can represent this 2 plus 2 cycloaddition more easily. So here in this photochemical condition, 2 plus 2 cycloaddition is taking place to get this um, cyclobutane ring and we will get this compound which next step which is already given is ozonolysis so here this will cleave and here one ketone and here also one ketone will be forming so this diketone actually one lactone is already present so this diketone is now formed then as we can see here is uh, acidic hydrogen is there which can be abstracted by this proton which can be abstracted by this base to take place intramolecular aldol reaction so the next this negative charge will attack at this position here it will be o minus that will be under h plus condition it will be oh and then uh, this will be eliminated as h2o and we will get this as our product so this will be the compound so first is 2 plus 2 cycloaddition 2 plus 2 cycloaddition, ozonolysis and intramolecular aldol reaction. So these are the three major, three reactions taking place in sequence to get this compounds. From starting from this compound one. I will explain once again. So, uh, this compound one upon uh, not for two plus two cycloaddition reaction under photochemical condition will give the cyclobutane ring, which upon ozonolysis will give this diketone, and which upon treatment with this base will abstract this proton, and this carbanion will attack at this carbon center, giving this here OH followed by that elimination. That is intramolecular aldol reaction followed by this elimination will give this alkene. And we will get this compound. Mm -hmm. 
moving to our last question of today's class that is the major product formed in the following reaction so here we have the starting material first we are treating it with magnesium then carbon dioxide then hydrolysis then cocl2 and then with a base so which will be the major product here So here first as we are treating with magnesium, here the CH2MgBr will be forming. Then upon treatment with carbon dioxide, it will be eliminated and it will be COOH. Then that COOH uh, upon treatment with this acid chloride will get COOCl. Then what will be happening with, with, with this triethylamine condition? So this is the reaction. So first this Grignard formation. So it will be MgBr. Then that MgBr upon treatment with this carbon dioxide and hydrolysis condition we will get this COOH. And this activation of this acid by this acid chloride we will get the COCl. And then this base can abstract this proton adjacent to this carbonyl group. And it will result in the formation of this ketene intermediate. So this ketene intermediate can then undergo 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. And it will be giving this compound. So which is our product. Uh, here one double bond is missing. That is already. No. Uh, yes double bond is missing. That is already in the product. So option 4 will be the correct answer here. So I will explain once again. First on treatment with this magnesium. Here MgBr will be forming. Then with this treatment with this carbon dioxide and water hydrolysis take place to form this carboxylic acid. Which upon activation using this COCl2 will give this acid chloride. And using this base this proton can be abstracted. Resulting in the formation of this ketene intermediate by the elimination of this chloride. And this ketene can undergo 2 plus 2 cycle addition with this because this is not accessible this is uh like equatorial and this is facing alpha and this is beta this is beta and this is alpha so this can undergo to plus two cycle addition to get this compound four So I hope it is clear from this today's discussion what all we discussed today. I will just briefly go through that.
So first we have discussed about the week one assignment questions. There were a total of 10 questions which were almost straightforward questions and some mechanism type questions we have already seen. Then we have uh, discussed about the summary of the last week lectures that is lecture 11, prostate landings. Lecture 11, prostate landings. Uh, by stocks and this Johnson's total synthesis. Then we have seen the mechanism of more fat oxidation. Then lecture 12 was about the total synthesis of biotin and lactocystin by Roche group and this Balvin's and Corey's total synthesis. Um, and we already seen the mechanism of this penic oxidation there. Then the lecture 13 was the discussion about triquinines and the total synthesis of isochamines by Perang's group and Fitcher's group. Then uh, this total, Then we have seen the mechanism of general mechanism of wagner meerwein rearrangement and how it can be utilized for ring expansion reactions. Then the lecture fourteen was about uh, triquinines again. That is total synthesis of isochamines, uh, alpha isochamine and beta isochamine by Ravel's group and the sulfiferfol six in five one by Ravel's group again where we saw this Patanobuji reaction and the conversion of ester to ketone and the ring opening of this oxytane formed as a result of this Patanobuji reaction. Then last lecture was about triquinanes, herustine and capnelin, uh, and where the key, key steps were the radical cyclization and the Claisen rearrangement. Then we saw the general mechanism of Claisen rearrangement and we have discussed some questions containing this type of rearrangement, wagner mirwin rearrangement, this carbene intermediate, cycloaddition reactions. Yeah, so that was about today's discussion on this week three lectures and the discussion of the assignments. I hope everything is clear. If you have any queries or doubts, you can post in the NPTEL uh, core section. Uh, I will go through it and try to clear it in the next class. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you.